We have two seemingly unrelated stories this morning in the Gospel of John. There's the feeding of the 5,000 according to John, and then there's Jesus walking on the water afterwards. It's almost like they've been shoved together in the Gospel, and our lectionary people have shoved them together for us here this morning. But trust me, it's not a shove together. They really do go together. They, they work together very nicely. And it's interesting. I was reading their gospel lesson this morning again and, and talking about needs and wants, right? We all know the difference between a need and a want. I want a vanilla shake. I probably need a glass of water right now. But, you know, there's a difference between needs and a wants. The interesting thing this morning about our gospel lesson, it never says that the people needed to eat. In verse 5, it says, Jesus looked up and saw the crowd and said, hmm, we need to feed them. People never asked for food. Jesus decided that they needed to eat. And in verse 11, and it wasn't just what they needed. It says they all ate until they had their fill, which meant it wasn't just enough to satisfy their need. They actually ate. And they ate well. And then after that, they collected 12 baskets of food. Jesus gave them what they wanted, not what they needed. But that's a sermon for a different day. See, it's interesting to me, these passages that we get this morning, that talks about this young boy who has five loaves and two fish, and Jesus asking Philip where we're going to get the food to feed these people, and Philip says, it's impossible, it can't be done. And that's what we think when we look at the world, right? There's too many problems in the world. It's impossible. It can't be done. It's impossible to bear everybody's burdens. It's impossible for us to break the chains that everybody is bound in. It's impossible for us to build all the bridges that we need to. What's the next one? It's impossible for us to bring hope to everybody that needs it. Bearing burdens. Breaking chains, building bridges, bringing hope. Those are the four things that we learned about in Detroit. Those are the four things that we went to Detroit to help them do. And you go to these places and you think, well, I'm going to take Jesus to them, right? Wrong. You go there and you meet Jesus already there. And that's what this lesson is about this morning. All of these lessons. Bless you. We have the juxtaposition of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and Jesus walking on the water because the disciples were terrified. They got in the boat. They knew that they were going across the sea. Jesus had disappeared from them, but they knew where they were headed because they'd already discussed the plan. So they got in the boat. They started to cross the sea. And as they were crossing the sea, Jesus started to walk out to them. And what happened? They saw him. They thought he was a ghost. They were terrified. What did he say? It is I. Do not be afraid. What did he say? You've read my hand. He didn't say, it is I. Do not be afraid. See, the Gospel of John has these little things in it. Next week we'll get the first one, right? There are eight I am statements in the Gospel of John. Next week we hear, I am the bread of life. But what is the significance of I am? I am is the name of God that God gave to Moses at the burning bush in Exodus. When Moses went to him, he said, Who am I supposed to tell them sent me? God says, I am that I am. I am is the name of God. And as Jesus was walking out to them on the water, he didn't say, It is I, do not be afraid. He said, Ego e me, do not be afraid. Ego e me is I am in Greek. He claimed the name of God. Jesus, walking to the disciples on the water, said, I'm God. Don't be afraid. And what happened when he said that? Boom, they hit the shore. There's no need to fear. There's no need to worry. Because if God is actually with us, everything's under control. He has control of the wind, the rain, the sea, all of the natural elements. He can feed 5,000 people from a, from a boy's lunch of two small fish and five loaves. And we, we think about five loaves of bread, right? You think five loaves of bread... It's not a loaf of bread. You have to think small. Like the pieces of bread that this kid had were probably about this big around. If that. 
There were five small pieces of bread that would probably only cover up the two small fish that he had. Right? Small fish. You guys that fish? If you caught a fish that big, would you keep it? If you caught a fish the size of my cell phone, would you keep it? Probably, maybe. Depends how, how bad of a day it's been, right? <laughs> if that's the biggest one I've caught all day, it's going in the boat. It's not going back in. But this boy had very small fish and very small pieces of bread. And Jesus told the people to sit down because you're going to eat. Why? Because Jesus is, I am. Jesus is God. And when we surrender to what God has called us to do, we're going to do great things. I have here a list of what we did. We, that's the royal we in Detroit. We, as a congregation, our group that went, did not do all of this. I will highlight what we did. But, as a group, the 30,000 of us that went to Detroit, for the city of Detroit, collected 1 million boxes of diapers. We distributed 1,425 backpacks. We cleared 3,200 lots, vacant lots of debris. We boarded up 319 vacant homes. They painted 1,847 murals. They planted 36 urban gardens. We built 99 picnic tables. We filled 26 industrial-sized dumpsters, not just the little dumpsters like we have out here. 26 industrial-sized dumpsters. And 600 neighborhoods were affected. They also collected blood. I have, don't have the figures on the blood. They also collected hair. 650 people donated hair, at least 8 inches each person. That's 433 feet of hair donated for people that need it. In three days' time, actually really in two days' time, because the first day there were so many debacles that most people didn't get to go do service on the first day. So in two days. So to say that we can't have an impact, to say that we can't bear burdens, to say that we can't break chains, to say that we can't build bridges, to say that we can't bring hope is a lie to ourselves. Not to anybody else but to ourselves, because this one small boy offered up his five loaves and two fish, and Jesus fed 5,000 people, because God can do wonderful, miraculous things if we just open ourselves up to him and allow him to do that. Our group, you can see the pictures of them out there, on the, the scrolling pictures on the TV screen out there, we filled one of these 26 dumpsters. I don't know how many tires I helped throw into that thing, and how many mattresses I watched people throw into that dumpster. It was crazy. We can all do something because God has given us, each of us, a gift to use in this world to do something for His name, to bring hope to other people. We did learn something else while we were in Detroit, and Carrie, Carrie's very proud of this. Carrie is not sitting in here with us because Carrie is sick. All of us got sick. Some of us worse than others on this trip. So, but we learned something else, and they said it quite loudly. I should make you come up here because you're the one that let everybody else through it. We learned that Jesus is. There's two of you here. You can say it. Say it louder. I can hear her over you. We learned that Jesus is. Good news, because he builds bridges, he breaks chains, he bears our burdens, and he most definitely brings us hope. And each and every one of us has the ability to go into the world to do that for those around us, to share the grateful, gracious story about Jesus and his love, and how he can come and take two fish and five loaves and turn them into a meal for over 5,000 people so that they could eat and not only eat, but eat their fill and have plenty left over for the next day. Because most certainly, Jesus is good news. And if we only open ourselves up to Him, oh, the wonderful things He'll do for us. And one last thing this morning. Jesus said to the disciples as they 
were rowing in this boat, afraid for their lives, marching against the wing, wind. Ego e me, do not be afraid. There's a poem by Helen Malacote called I Am. I was regretting the past and fearing the future. Suddenly my Lord was speaking. My name is I Am. He paused. I waited. He continued. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. When you live in the future with its problems and its fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. When you live in this moment, it is not hard. I am here. My name is I am. To open yourselves up to Jesus and allow Him to use you and the gifts that He's given you to do wonderful and miraculous things for all of this world around you.